ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 2. Now, we just in the last episode finished up Jack's loyalty mission, which I'm again going to heap a bit of praise on and say that is probably my favorite mission in the entire series. Or my favorite mission in Mass Effect 2, at the very least. There were quite a few cool missions in the third game that probably beat that out, but I won't talk any more on that for fear of spoiling things. But anyways, we just finished up with that, and I implied at the end of that that we would be taking a little break from loyalty missions to do something else for a while. And indeed we will. You see... You see... I am going to be... Heading off... To do one of the pieces of... DLC that I've had sitting on the back burner for a while now. I'm going to be doing the Overlord DLC. Or more specifically, I'm probably going to be doing about half of it this time because it's definitely longer than what I could fit in a single episode, so I'll do what I can this time. Probably the intro bit and one of the two Huzuma Watsits. Trying to be a little vague here, just on the off chance there's someone watching who hasn't seen that DLC yet, I want to avoid spoiling it, unlikely as that scenario is. But first we'll go ahead and read this message from the elusive man. Shepard, one of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compartmentalized, enough that I can't divulge operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet Ite, Typhon system in the Phoenix Massing Cluster. Please use care in this matter. Okay, and that's where we're off to, but first I'm going to head down have a few brief conversations with people that I didn't do last time. Let's see. Garrus is at the point where he's basically seeing the same thing over and over again, so we can skip him. Rand has a loyalty mission. I don't remember if we talked to Samara last time. Let's see. Samara, Thane, and Kasumi. Then Jack and Zaid. Out crew quarters. I'm just kind of going to rush through these conversations a little bit, honestly, because I want to get right into the thick of things again, so chances are I won't be commenting much on what they're actually saying. Hey, got a minute? I can see why Jack is the way she is. I don't like it, but I get it. Gabby and Ken would make a great couple. I just doubt they'll ever realize it. The Normandy runs so quietly. I'm not used to hearing my footsteps when I walk. Come back later. I'm sure I'll have more to talk about. Do you need something? Have a few minutes to talk? Of course, Shepard. Join me. I've been thinking about you. And I, you. Will you hear my confession, Shepard? I wouldn't talk to you if I didn't want to hear what you have to say. When I married Erika, the Hanar let me leave their service to raise a family. But I had no other skills, so I freelanced. When Erika was killed, I pursued those responsible. Once I'd eliminated them, I had no goal. I accepted the Dantius Commission because I didn't know what else to do. Not the healthiest attitude to take on a mission. You're right, it's not. Looking back now, 
It's clear I'd resigned myself to death. I would have fulfilled my contract. If Nasana's guards caught me afterwards, it would have been a good death. But someone else was pushing to reach the target, forcing me to move faster, challenging me. I had to reach her first. I had no idea you planned to die in there. It wasn't a plan. My body had accepted its death. My mind had been dead a long time. Your mission gave me purpose, a cause to die for, a chance to atone. I was able to speak to my son again. I can leave my body in peace. You've had a hard life. You deserve some peace. Whatever may happen, my gun is yours. Shepard, anything new? There is something I've wanted to tell you. I've done many things in my lifetime. I thought the galaxy held nothing new for me. Since joining you, I've realized how much more there is. You must have seen many things in your years of travel. As a maiden, I served as a mercenary. I fought tyrants and pirates. I experienced everything the galaxy has to offer. As a Justicar, I saw parts of Asari space few know about. I destroyed villages and saved cities. I even fought a specter. Why did you fight a specter? A Torian named Nihilus. He may have been on council business, but I witnessed him kill an unarmed civilian. Following the code, I attacked. Nihilus seemed like an honorable Turian, and a good specter. He may have been. However, killing unarmed civilians is wrong. How did the fight turn out? I had the advantage, but he was good. He returned fire and tried to run. We played cat and mouse in the wilderness for two weeks. It was exhilarating. Finally, he created a situation in which my only options were to let an innocent die or pursue him. The code compelled me to save the innocent, and he escaped. I admire how he adapted and used my code against me. What have your years as a Justicar been like? Mostly tedium and hardship. Traveling on freighters, wandering through rural areas, <clears throat> rooting out injustices big and small, putting down corrupt officials. When I arrive in a remote area, individuals often approach me with matters of justice. My judgment rarely turns out the way they hope. How do you pay for transportation between worlds? Asari captains often welcome Justicars. We reduce pirate attacks. One raid was called off when the pirates were able to verify that I was aboard. Why would you destroy an entire village? I tracked Morinth to a remote colony world. She'd perverted an entire town making them worship her and bring young Asari as sacrifices. When I arrived, she fled, throwing her minions at me in waves. They bought her time with their lives. When it was done, only small children remained. I left them in the authorities' care and continued my pursuit. What was being a mercenary like? I was a young, impulsive maiden who discovered her talent for combat. I reveled in it until the day my troop was hired to guard a mysterious shipment on its way to some clandestine drop-off area. I discovered the shipment was slaves, to be traded to the collectors for advanced technology. I can't imagine you went along. I demanded that we turn around. My mates disagreed. After they were dead, I brought the ship around. The collector craft was just arriving. They closed faster than I could flee. Fortunately, we were close to the mass relay. I got through, and they did not pursue. What did you do with all the slaves? I lectured them on the virtues of strength and defending oneself. Then I distributed the armor, weapons, and credits of my dead colleagues, and released the captives on the Citadel. We're not done with this yet. I am sure. It will be my honor to be by your side at the end. You think we're all gonna die? 
You've assembled a powerful group, but we are fighting an unknown. I am ready for whatever comes, but I do not fool myself about our chances. We'll finish this mission, and live to see the end. I hope you are right. I knew this girl once. Asari. Good head on her shoulders. We had this whole thing going. Until she sold me out to the blood pack. Put a sour note on the relationship. Doesn't matter who you are. You got a gun in your face, chances are good you'll do what the other man says. Only two types don't buckle at that point. Trained killers and psychopaths. A lot of people can't tell the difference. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. Alrighty, well, that's us done with our conversations. Sorry, I know that probably a lot of people were hoping to hear me chatter on or make fun of some aspects of that, but given that I've already sat through those conversations in my previous recording of this, I just wasn't feeling it, so I left that out, and now that we're done with that, I can move on to the main event. And hit up the actual DLC. Let's go investigate Project Overlord. Let's go over this way. And of course it's the system at the far edge of things. What would it be? Orbit, and I'm not actually going to read the text on this. You may have noticed that, but for the vast majority of places, I've kind of stopped reading the text for the planet description just because I don't feel like it adds anything to the Let's Play, other than just some more time that I spend reading text. But I will take the time to scroll through it. That way you can pause the video and read it yourself if you're that interested in this sort of thing. But anyways, let's land. That was an unnaturally long load time for our party selection, but anyways. For the actual party, we're going to go with my usual team of Garrus and Kasumi, I think. I basically always go with them, and it's a pretty good mix, if you ask me. Shepard has five points that we can use to level her up, but I'm not actually going to use those just yet. I'm waiting until I decide to give Shepard an advanced power, because I'm going to use the points on that. Nobody else has enough to buy anything.
Um, we're all kitted out appropriately. So. Although, speaking of. I will change out the grenade launcher for the arc projector, just because bit of foreknowledge, but I do know there's a lot of robots in this mission, and the arc projector is basically the game's anti-robot weapon. So I'm going to take advantage of that where I can. And I do remember there being a couple of heavy mechs as well, so we'll deal with that. My name is Dr. Gavin Archer. The situation is urgent. We're facing a catastrophic VI breakout. I'll explain the details later, but you must retract that transmission dish. The controls aren't Catastrophic VI outbreak. That sounds vaguely familiar. Oh yeah, that's right. We had a rogue VI mission on Mass Effect in Mass Effect 1 on Luna, that's right. So it reminds me of that. Of the base. There are gas on the loose. A rogue VI program has seized control, and I've lost a lot of friends today. I'd hate to see you join them. Please watch yourself. Oh, don't worry about that, Gavi boy. You see, I'm the protagonist. Therefore, I have access to the ability to reload my save game. Therefore, I can't actually die permanently. Here from the inside. So yeah, I can reload save games, so I actually can't die permanently. So I think we're good. Shotguns. Let's 
try that. Nice. Get risky. By dying, by the way. You haven't quite worked that far out yet. As I'm sure the problem is just that they hadn't figured out how to stop yet. They were planning on it, they just haven't worked out the niggly little details. That's all. That's all. I'll take your stuff. Oh, there you are, Damn Jared. I thought for a second we left you behind. He'll have a clear line of sight to our satellite. Tight. Uh, there's an annoying amount of loading to load in this episode, as well as stutters and freezes. My apologies, guys. I don't know what's causing that. I really have no idea. It was perfectly fine. It was completely fine. In the last episode, when I was last recording, I wasn't getting anywhere near that amount of stuttering. You die. You can die. Well, that's them taken care of. And yeah, I know I'm being awfully casual about fighting Geth and everything, but to be fair, Shepard fights a lot of Geth, so... For a lot of people, this would be basically the apocalypse, but... For us... It's Tuesday. I'm not sure where the origin of that joke is, but I do love it. I do love it. Apparently we can't get through that door because Gath. Makes sense. That's a security procedure. Lock the door so Gath. Break into your inner sanctum like, as they show up. Speaking of locked doors. And there we go. I that you will have seen that because I cut out hacking for the most part. Because it is, to borrow a phrase, really fucking boring. Hunting the country. I don't think we need you around anymore. Same with your boyfriend squad, actually. Take your damn head out. I gotta say, it is a nice little touch. It is a nice touch. Yes, have that green glow around. As a sort of way to represent them being possessed by the AI. 
it's a cool little pot. It's a cool little graphical touch to differentiate these from just grab Yeah. Like the one we had on haste. To my elbow, get scum. Die to my elbow. You as well. You can also die to my elbow. Because my elbow is the ultimate power in the universe. As everyone obviously knows. Shepard's elbow wins all battles. Attention. Satellite broadcast window is open. Soon. You need to destroy the support struts now. They have their own capacitors. Try blowing them up. Okay. Blow shit up. To get our job done. Well, it's not the worst plan ever. Blowing things up is, after all, a tried and true and have a solution to problems in the military. So, really, we're just honoring the military's tradition of blowing shit up to solve our problems. It's not like we're doing anything unusual. We are shaking the place to high hell. See, I'm as accurate as ever. I clearly never, ever, ever miss. Oh, let's uh, Shepard out the shotgun, damn it. Jairus. Up. Good night. Ish. I really don't use the shotgun nearly as much as I should. Hello there. Goodbye. You know what? Let's be dramatic and finish it with the shotgun. And suck on that, VI. Suck on that. Yeah, let's GTFO before we end up a little bit on the squish side. Citadel was bad enough. I don't need to be almost squished here as well. Over here! What the hell's going on around here? Man's reach exceeding his grasp. Come on. I'll explain. Dear God, his lip sync there was utter trash. It really was. That was just the worst. But we gained a level. We got some credits. And the dish was destroyed. So it could have been worse. You have certainly. my thanks, Commander Shepard. You bought us some time, though probably not much. 
This isn't over yet. Right, let's skip right to the larger point here. What's the situation? We already know who the guy is, after all. I'm not that forgetful. You owe us that Andrew explanation. Shepherd, for that matter. This is Project Overlord. An attempt to gain influence over the Geth by interfacing a human mind with a VR. I'm sorry. The results have what? been less than satisfactory. Just from that description, my mind immediately jumped to some of the bullshit that Cerberus tried in the past. Weaponizing Thorian creepers and Rachni. I'm looking at you. And yeah, that is sure as fuck putting it mildly. If this is what you call less than satisfactory, I'd hate to see what you'd consider a outright disaster, really. I'd hate to see what you call a disaster. Yeah, that. You can't dismiss the entire project. We did succeed, at least partially. I would My brother call David this much of a success, to test honestly. Whatever His results you got, the VI connection. He's like the outcome, now. I'd say, Infecting catastrophic failure. Of any yes. technology he finds. An appropriate. It's why you had to destroy the dish. Imagine if his program got off-world. How does he take control of electronics? This is a hybrid intelligence the likes of which I've never seen. I don't know where the man ends and the machine begins. What's the worst-case scenario? A technological apocalypse. Every machine, every weapon, every computer could be turned against us. If he hit the extranet, who knows where it would end. And, come on, you had to have known there were risks. Seriously, guys. You didn't take any precautions against your test subject turning in, uh, into uh, whatever this is didn't take any precautions with your equipment when you knew you were messing with untested technology. Even for Cerberus, that seems awfully reckless. You should have considered that before Just you saying started saying something, experiment. considering some of the bullshit to we got for every in the first game. Certainly not the abomination David has become. David... Dude, the you didn't account for, for any outcomes. Atlas got Station. no room to talk. To enter, you need to manually override security from our facilities in the Prometheus and Vulcans. Yeah, somehow I don't think that David is just going to let us walk in, hit the switches, and walk out. And what happens if I have to kill your brother? That's not what I was going for, but... Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. I suppose it is a valid question. <sighs> Fine. Tell me about the stations, if you would. Tell me about Vulcan and Prometheus stations. Vulcan station is our geothermal plant. It generates power for the four outposts. Prometheus station is a crashed Geth ship full of dormant machines. Crashed we Geth ship? For our Fuck. This is going to go horribly wrong. I can already tell you that. It's going to go awful. A crash ship full of dormant geth. I'm getting horror vibes from that already. That's like the Mass Effect version of you walk into a haunted house at midnight. There is no way that doesn't go badly. They're going to come to life and try to murder me. I'm calling it right now. But what's this place? What happens on this station? This is Hermes Station, our communications uplink with the wider galaxy. If you hadn't destroyed the dish in time, the outcome would have been catastrophic. What can you tell me about Atlas Station? Atlas Station is the main laboratory where all of our VI experiments take place. It's your final goal once you've overridden the lockdown. It's also where my brother became something else. I suppose that's one way to put it. Tell me more about Project Overlord. We wanted to turn the Geth's religious impulse into a weapon. When we saw them following Saren, we realized they could be swayed. 
And if a proper figurehead was created, a virus with a face, if you will, the Geth might be controlled. Well, these guys certainly don't lack for ambition. I'll give them that, even if I think their plan is completely fucking stupid and was doomed to failure from the beginning. I can't deny that it was an ambitious project. That's an ambitious undertaking. It would be the perfect weapon. Victory without casualties. We could avoid war with the Geth altogether. That was the plan, anyway. And how did that work out for you? Don't answer. That was a rhetorical question. What went wrong with the experiment? David volunteered to interface with the VI to give it genuine consciousness. Theoretically, it should have been safe, but with artificial intelligence, there's no such thing as safe. Yeah. That's putting it lightly. Honestly, like everything Cerberus does, with the exception of bringing Shepard back to life, I think it's safe to say this was a bad idea to begin with, and you really should not have been messing with artificial intelligence. It's always going to go wrong, with the exception of Edie, because Edie is awesome. Then you shouldn't have attempted it. And what if you've never attempted to find the Reapers, Commander Shepard? Where would the galaxy be then? Sometimes you have to ignore the risks. Yeah, well, you see, the difference is that me attempting to find the Reapers is looking for information, trying to uncover clues. The worst that happens there is, one, I look stupid, and two, I don't find anything. Or possibly piss off some species from looking at stuff they want to keep secret. You, on the other hand, are risking a lot more than just looking stupid. So you can't really compare the two, I'm afraid. Sorry, your argument doesn't hold up. I'm heading out now. The other stations are all within driving distance. Best of luck, Commander. Okay. Well, we're done here. Oh, we can head out on the hammerhead and find these stations. But I've been going for a reasonable length of time. I know I said that I was going to do one of these stations. That is the thing I was talking about back at the beginning. I said I was going to do one of these stations in addition to the starting bit here. But honestly, I think just the starting bit is long enough for one episode. It'll be a bit shorter than my usual fare. Generally, 40 minutes to an hour is the typical length. But this just feels like a natural point to stop at. So... When we come back, I will be heading out to hit those two stations, and then going after David. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you then, folks. Take care, everyone, and so long for now.